Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rebecca Rizewski, I'm Associate Professor and Information Services Librarian at the Library of the Health Sciences Chicago. And thank you for taking time out of your schedule today to attend um, How to Find uh, Full Text, the 30 minute workshop. And I'm gonna try hard to get it under 30 minutes. And I practiced, I did earlier. So um, I try to, will try to have this done within 30 minutes. I will also stay on longer if there's any questions that come up along the way. Um, in addition to myself here, I have my colleague, Rosie Haneke, who will be uh, monitoring chat today um, and also uh, periodically putting in some links uh, to some things that I'm talking about today. Uh, what I'm hoping to cover is uh, going over some strategies for finding full text articles through our website, how to request articles that you cannot find online, and recommendations for other resources that you can use for finding full text articles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. And please let me know along the way if there are questions that come up or um, just let me know, or you can type those in the chat box. And actually, before let me do this, let me, I'm just going to uh, do a poll here so that I can just get an idea of where everyone is in terms of how they start with finding full text articles. So I'm going to launch a poll here. And if you could just let me know which website that you start with first to find full text articles. And if it's not any of these, that's OK. Um, and you can just put in. Um, in the chat box uh, where you start that's not listed here that's totally fine it's just so i can see um you know what's going to show up here okay i'm going to give it a couple more seconds because i think almost everyone has filled it up thank you and i'm just going to end the poll Okay, and just in terms of the poll, it looks like, uh, which I was not surprised, Google Scholar, uh, the library website, and then a particular database or journal. So this just gives me an idea of, of you know, how comfortable, you know, people, where people are starting with with this. Okay, so thank you. Okay, so hopefully you should be able to um, see my screen right now. And uh, so I'm on the library website, library.uic.edu. And you're going to see this very tempting search box in the library homepage. And this will... This is going to bring up results or citations from a lot of our databases. It's not going to bring them up from everywhere, though, because there's times when things won't show up. And I'll talk about that in a couple of minutes about how what to do if they don't show up where you think they should be. Uh, it also will search. Um, it will search ebooks. It will also bring up um, book records, too. And when I am doing searches for specific kinds of items, like for example, books, when we have questions that come in about books, I'll go to books and media. So I'm gonna go with my uh, first example today. Uh, so let me just bring that back over here. So I can just copy and paste this over so you can see. And this, I'm gonna show you a successful example of when I'm looking for something and it actually will show up. <laughs> so here is the article right here. I'm going to click on, I can click on this so I can go here, or it also has this read article link. And sometimes it will also say download a PDF, and then you would just be able to download the PDF. Uh, so what this one is doing is it's just going to take me here. And then as you see, in a matter of seconds, I was able to get the PDF. And then I would be able to download it, print it out, save it, do whatever I need to do. So that is just, that is a successful example of, yes, I found something, yay. And then I can go and print it out. So what happens if you can't find something? Uh, you put in the article title in the search box. It could be um, that one recommendation is that you'd be logged into because that's the library catalog. So you could be logged in with your net ID and password. It could also be for some reason we just don't have that particular journal or it could be the database that we don't have everything in there like in terms of all of our database uh, or journal subscriptions. So that could be why something's not showing up in there. So now I'm going to show you some examples of when okay I 
searched the search box and it's and what the article that I'm looking for is not showing up. What's my next steps? You could try to go on to, of course, Google Scholar, which a couple of you mentioned, that's where you search. You could go if it's a health sciences journal, you could try PubMed or a, a particular database that you're interested in. Like, let's say if you're from education, you could go to Eric or um, engineering IEEE. So it, you could go that route, or you could even go into Scopus or Academic Search Complete, which are big multidisciplinary databases, and see if you can get the article that way. Because those are my backup plans if PubMed doesn't work for the health sciences. So I have this article here that I went into PubMed, and then I clicked on, if I click on this Find a UIC button to see if we have this available. So you're seeing that libkey, it's, you're seeing that briefly as I'm looking here. And that's a way that we're trying to, we're gradually adding this to our databases uh, so that it will try to get the full text and bring it up to get you the PDF in the fastest way. So here is the PDF that I can print out or save. So that's just, this, again, a successful example of a situation that I can get the PDF. So before we get into my other examples, which are when the PDFs don't show up, I'm just going to do my, my second poll here. So just give me um, like another minute here just to bring this up. So I want to see just my next poll here, uh, just to get an idea if you've ever requested articles before. OK, so I'm, I'm seeing most of the yeses so far. OK, I see a few people. OK, so we've got, OK, I think almost everyone here has participated. Thank you. Going to end the poll. OK, and share results. So I think it's we, most people have. So that's good. This will be a review for some of you and uh, new, new information for a few of you here. OK, so I'm going to end that out. So I'm going to go to my next example here. So with my next example, this is actually from a chat question that I got earlier this year. A patron was looking for this particular article. When I clicked find it UIC, what it, it wasn't giving me an option for PDFs or anything like that. So it was giving me here, it was telling me that it's in print. This is what this means. It's in the stacks, it's in print. It's also giving me an interlibrary loan option. It's asking me to log in here. So this is a little confusing here. When it's asking you to log in the middle of the screen, that is for the library catalog. This is for when if you needed to request any books. So in this case, I would just go straight to this interlibrary loan article or link here. So I'm going to show you, for those of you who don't have an account set up yet, how you can set this up. So I'm going to go over here on back to the library homepage, library.uic.edu, going up to the accounts. And then I'm clicking on this interlibrary loan account. Then I'm going to log in. And so since I already logged, since I've already logged in, I have I use my net ID and password. And for those of you who do not have accounts, uh, what you would do is when you're do, putting in that net ID and password, there's a form that you're going to fill out. And that form that you're going to fill out, it's going to probably ask you, I think, for your library ID number, and it's on your iCard. If you don't have an iCard, um, it's going to, it's going to, um, I would put in um, NA, because we, I, we have some distance learners, we have people who don't, who never get an iCard. So you can still set this up if you don't have one. So then I, so once you fill out this form, then you would be able to request articles. So I'm going to go back to that particular example here that, okay, what happens if I feel, you know, let's say I want this article, I click on that request link. When I have, I'm all logged in, as you see, it's filling out the information here. So I don't have to type this in and copy and paste. So you can say, I do you want to in a, in a language other in English, usually no. And then you can submit the request. You will receive an email when the article is available um, in this account. And it, if, it's a, if it's in print, it doesn't take very long. Uh, usually, I know in our library, I've gotten articles within like, I think let's say in the morning, I'll put the request and I could get it by the end of the day. So they're actually very good. You know, the, our staff here, they, get, they see it come in, they go downstairs, they scan it, they send it. 
Um, they cannot directly send PDFs to your um, email because of copyright. So you have to log in here to get the PDFs and they would be under um, this electronically uh, received articles is where you can go and they sit in there for up to 30 days. Also, um, I would recommend if let's say it's a patient care situation and you want to make sure that you you will get the article as you know as soon as possible, you can put a note in here saying like this is a rush request, this is for patient care. Um, and then if we have it, we'll take care of it. If not, I think they send it to National Library of Medicine. They're pretty good at that, um, getting the, the request filled. Um, but overall, I'm going to say it's going to take two or three days. If you request it in the middle of the week, it's going to take that's the they say the that's the best time and, and it also depends on the time of year now there's you know since most of the students are not you know don't have summer classes um, there's there will be less requests so i would say give it at least two or three days it could take a little bit longer again depending on the time of the year so that is interlibrary loan and then i just wanted to show you real uh, quick this is another example this is a journal that we don't have a subscription to I go to find it UIC and you're going to see the screen's going to look a little bit different than the last one I showed you. So you can go to, I guess, whatever link here, it's the same link I think you can click on. And then again, it should take that information. It should fill it in and then you'll submit the request and you'll receive an email when the article's available and it's rare that they can't fill something. Um, so I think before I move on to um, a couple other examples here, I just wanted to check and see if there were any questions. Nothing in the chat yet, but um, you can feel free to unmute yourself if you have a question you'd like to ask Rebecca. I see one of the participants is saying that Elliot is very responsive. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, they, they do such a wonderful job. Um, and they and a lot of our staff was working in person during a good part of the uh, early part of the pandemic, too. So we appreciate all the work that they've done. So, yeah, so please let us know if there are questions, you know, that come up along the way. Please let us know. So then um, I wanted to show you another example of something that's it's an unusual situation that comes up. And, and as I think about this, it's, I guess, I don't know how much longer we'll see this kind of a situation. So I guess we'll see. So I had gotten a, a chat question from a patron about a journal, it's called uh, Public Management Review. And it actually had an embargo on it. And so we actually have a subscription to this journal. But, and as you see this article from December of 2022, but unfortunately we couldn't couldn't get the article. The reason why this is happening is it's an embargo. And what that means is that the publisher has said, let's say it's it's from um, sometimes they'll say it's the latest 12 months are not available, the latest 18 months are not available. And that seems kind of as I think about it and talk, and talk to you know say this that you know with with you know open access, it I just wonder how long this model is going to be possible. Uh, just it's just something I want to mention that, that something like this could come up on occasion. It, it doesn't always come up, but just to show you, like when I go to find it, UIC, and there, see, it's telling me here, and I'm going to actually go and just search real quick with the journal. So here we can go to, I'm back on the library homepage, going to journals. So here's the journal. Okay, so see, this is like, so it's give or take this one that looks like a year and three months, so give or take 15 months or so. Those are just to show you that this, this could happen. It's happening less and less now, especially with open access, uh, but that might happen on occasion. If that's the case, that is a situation that I would use interlibrary loan. Okay. So I've, I've talked about, or I showed you successful examples of when you know, we have the full text and then what to do to request it through interlibrary loan when we don't have it. So what happens <laughs> if you go and you're like, wait a minute, it says we're supposed to have this. And it's, and it's asking you to pay $40 or something like that. So I would, I would recommend first, try going to chat with a librarian 
and you'll see that the chat box is, is enabled. You could try chatting with us. Now we can't directly fix the issue because our electronic resources staff, they don't monitor chat. But you could ask us and see, just to see, can I actually get this article? Can you see if you can get this? Because it could be an issue with on-campus versus off-campus. Uh, maybe for some reason it's not working off-campus. So we can check and see. And if it's not working off-campus, um, that maybe we could send it to you. If we confirm that we cannot access the article, then what we would do is we would create a ticket and we would send it to our electronic resources staff. We'll ask for your email address and your name just to have that information. I'd say within a, a day or two, they can, most cases they can fix it. There are times they can't fix it. Um, it could be that the journal subscription has changed, the publishers have changed, and we lost access to the journal and they will update in the system. Uh, I'd say if you really want the article and you'd wanna make sure that you get it, I would request it through interlibrary loan. In terms of when our, uh, our chat or ask a librarian is available, that is right now during the summer. It's from 7.30 to 7, Monday through Friday, 10 to 7 on Saturdays, and we're not staffed on Sundays for chat. But during the fall spring semesters, it's 1, I think it's like 7 or 7.30 to 1 a.m. I think almost every night except Saturdays. Um, so just to let you know that you have that option. Uh, the other option is if we're, let's say you would feel more comfortable sending an email or, we're, or we don't have anybody on chat. You can go on the library homepage, go to contact us, and then you can fill out an email, email us, and then you would just put in information here where you're, you're affiliated, your campus, and then you would select e-resource e e access problem, uh, and then just let us know like what the issue is, like if you want to include a screenshot or something like that. Um, so that's just to let you know if there's ever an issue that comes up and it and it will because we have what 50,000 electronic journals so keeping track of all these you know, sometimes it will happen that way some other options that i would recommend is that you could always go through google scholar google scholar is another way that of course some of you say that you like to go through google scholar that is an option another thing that you can use or a tool that you can use is called libkey nomad and i'm actually going to see if i can go to one of my browsers here and so this is PubMed. I, I was in PubMed a few minutes ago, and this is, I think, one of, oh, is that the one article I'm looking at? Oh, I think that's a different one. As usual, I have a lot of tabs open. Here we go. So this is the article that I was, I had shown you um, a little while ago, and you'll see the screen looks a little bit different. So it's, so what LibKey Nomad is, it's a browser plugin, and it connects to um, our, it kind of connects to our full text. So when you're in a, a website like PubMed, a resource like PubMed, there's a download PDF option will show up. And then it just, it's telling you this is provided by UIC and you can, I think you should be able to close that out. Uh, so this is something that is a way as you're going through and I'm just gonna, let's see, I'll do a really quick search here. Here's my really quick search is just so that you can see what it looks like when I'm browsing through a list of journals. So it's it's telling you here, okay, here's a manuscript PDF. And actually these first couple here, I don't, hmm, that's weird because this is access options. Sometimes that means we don't have it, uh, but I, maybe it might be an, a link. So this is just to show you that this is another way if you wanted to get full text. Uh, we also have some other options I would recommend in addition to LibKey Nomad which is, I think, available through Safari and other, um, other browsers, too. Uh, we also have Core Discovery. That's another option, the Open Access button, and then on Paywall. Those are some other resources that you could take a look at and see as other options for getting PDFs. And then I know another option that is available um, is ResearchGate, which um, maybe some of you have online accounts for, because sometimes people will post. They should be posting the final, or um, the final, not the final version of the article, but at least the one that, that is, I guess, the final proof of that article. So that's, those are some other options um, that are available to you if you wanted to get full text articles. And then in terms of other resources to know about, or the sorry, little, Rebecca. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. There okay. is a question in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, if you can't find an article through UIC Library, then would these other databases have it? Um, 
so it's possible. I, so Carrie, do you mean the other, like the plugins, like would the LibKey pl Nomad mm -hmm. plugin or Core Discovery be able to find it? Yeah, um, so I am not familiar with these other plugged in um, databases. So is this like in addition to what UIC library has or is UIC, because I know I use UIC library a lot and has a lot of <laughs> full text in there. So I usually um, go there and then if I don't find it, I go to interlibrary loan. Um, but I guess the question is how much more articles do these other places have it or um, is it more of a supplement or is it in replace of? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Um, good question. Because the LibKey Nomad that I, I mentioned, that's the one I would say is like an official. That's the most official one because we we have a subscription to that. The other ones I would say are like supp supplements, like supplementary resource, because like we're not always, always going to bring up, for example, what would be in like a Google Scholar. Um, so you could try and see if it's available in Google Scholar, or if you wanted to install these browser plugins, you could try it that way and see if you can get the full text. Uh, but if it doesn't work, I, you could still request it through interlibrary loan. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. So the resource that I wanted to show you, it's a little bit different. It's called browsing. And browsing is a current awareness tool. So what browsing will do, is that you can set this up. You'd have to, you have to create an account in browsing. You can use this on your phone and you can sync between your phone or your tablet with your laptop because they actually created the app before the before <laughs> they did the desktop version, which is un, which was back then unusual. <laughs> which now I think that's not going to that, that could change. So what you would do here is that you once you have your account set up. You can go to whichever subject area that you're interested in, and then you would add the journals that you're interested in, and um, and they call it like your bookshelf. So then when you have your journals in your bookshelf, uh, they actually turn this option on within the past year. You can get emails when a new issue has come in, and then you can go and read these on your mobile device or on your computer. Uh, it's it's a it's a really great tool. Like and it's. I know a lot of the clinicians or the nurse practitioners then I know like to use this because you can read this when you don't when you're offline. So if you're on the train, you're on airplane, you want to catch up with reading some articles, you can certainly do that. You can send the articles to um, the PDFs to a citation manager. Now this is not used like how like if you're searching uh, the library website, like you wouldn't be able to put in like a, a certain topic because it's a, it's like the title, subject, or ISSN. But if you do know a DOI, the DOI number or PMID number uh, from PubMed, you would put that in and then it'll look it up that way. So this is more of a current awareness tool that you do have to make sure you set this up so that it's with UIC, that you would usually have a separate browsing account. Once it's set up, you should be able to sync back and forth between your, like your computer, let's say at work, and then if you have it on your phone. So this is just another option, like a little bit different than what I just showed you. Uh, and then I also want to mention a couple other uh, ways that you can get full text is that our, some citation managers uh, will have a way that you it will, they will bring in the PDFs. Uh, RefWorks uh, recently now, if if it is a if they find the PDF through PubMed or if it's freely available, if when you're downloading the citations into RefWorks or export or imp moving them in or importing them in, it will include the PDFs if they are available. Because if it's if it's something that the library is paying for, like EBSCO ProQuest, it's not going to work. But as long as it's freely available, it should find the PDFs. I think so Tara will also do the same thing. We'll try to look and see if, if, if there's PDFs available. And then EndNote, um, they, there is a link that you can put into EndNote. Um, let me see if I can get that for you. That you see that, um, that it's not, and I will warn you, it's not 100% accurate, uh, but that's another option that we have. Let me see here. So yeah, there's instructions here. If there, if we have any EndNote users, again, it's not full. It's not foolproof because uh, it's not going to find everything. Now we're hoping that because I know there's a new version that just came out. Maybe it'll be better, uh, but at least we'll be able to find some PDFs. And they also have something uh, like uh, 
kind of like that libkey nomad that I showed you, but I guess it's the EndNote version of that. Let me see if I can go back to my PubMed here. Here we go. So you're seeing here, I have like, there's a couple resources or links that have like few PDF. Uh, that's called EndNote Click. That's what that is. It's another browser plugin that you can store your PDFs in there too. Um, so if you're an EndNote user, you might want to take a look at that. Um, so those are just some other options with PDFs that you can use with your citation managers and getting the full text. Um, okay, so I think I covered every everything that I wanted to cover. Were there any questions that came up? Anything that you wanted me to go over or show you again? Rebecca, sorry, this is Carrie again. How do you uh, set up that whole EndNote again? Yes, let me... Sorry. No, it's good. It's okay. So are you talking about the one for um, in, within EndNote, the find full text feature or the EndNote click? Uh, EndNote click. I okay. guess that's where you just grab all yes. the citation. Yeah, let me see. Ah. And do you find that EndNote um, web is a better software than an actual uh, not an online one. Yeah. So the thing that I'm curious about here, let me get you that. This is the the browser plugin um, for okay. that, so that it gives you like an, I think it'll give you an overview of how it works. Um, yeah. But this is uh, so I find now. So here's the thing: they just came out with a new version of EndNote, and from what I see. They, it looks like they finally, finally, finally did some work on the new, on the online version that EndNote web. Like it looks, from what I can tell, it looks a lot prettier. Because mm -hmm. um, right now, I if I I would I'm not a big fan of of the one they have now, because uh, they really haven't done much with it. It's I think it's clunky. I would pick RefWorks as Otero versus the online version. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious to see because it looks like they have finally done, made some changes to it. Something tells me they're always going to have the all the bells and whistles in the desktop. Mm -hmm. I would I would want to see how this new version works because if this new version works pretty well, I would I would consider using that. But I, I'm on the fence until I see it because honestly, the new version and it just came out within the last two weeks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? There's I have a question. Oh, go ahead, Patricia. Sorry. Um, so um, sometimes when I'm trying to access um, a full text version from a source website and it says log in through your institution. And so then I think like Athens or something, you log in through your institution and then I get the message you're not authorized. Okay. Yes. What does that mean? I think that's because we don't read. We don't have, as far as I know, I could be wrong about this. I don't think we have any connections through Athens. Um, so that's probably what's going on because sometimes like I'll, I'll see that we don't, we're not listed. Mm -hmm. So what might be happening is either we don't have access to that resource or you, it's you probably would have to go straight back to the library website and seeing if you can get it that way. I think that's what's going on. It could be that we don't have access to it or it's probably, we just have to go through our website in order to get it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's how it's how it's connected. And I'm, um, let's see. And I thought I saw, was there a question about dissertations? Uh, how to access dissertations. Uh, so in terms of getting access to those, now here's the thing, it's not gonna be all the dissertations. It's just gonna be, actually there's, there's a lot, but not everything. So in terms of dissertations, I'm going back to the library homepage. I'm going to the databases page. And then there's a database that we have called dissertations and theses. And this is available through ProQuest. Now this looks a little different. Maybe I have to do the ProQuest. I'll go this way. So 
So it should give you an addition. I think it's giving you some of what we have for the Big Ten, but it, there's also, I think you'll see UIC, some of the UIC dissertations. Um, that is, this is one option. Again, this is not gonna be everything. Another place you could take a look, especially if it's UIC dissertations, you could try Indigo, which is our institutional repository. That is another place for dissertations. Or I would even try Google Scholar, because uh, maybe for some reason that institution doesn't have their uh, dissertations through there. Um, I but I know not still not all dissertations are available. You could try requesting the interlibrary loan as an option. Sometimes they will lend them out. Sometimes they don't. It's so that it's it's worth a shot. Um, but if you can't get it as a dissert um, at all, then I you might have to buy it if you really really want it. But I would see if you can request it first. Um, hope that answers your question. Okay. All right. Um, so I see we're at 130. So I, you know, if you have additional questions, you can certainly, um, you know, I'll stay on for a few minutes, but if not, uh, my colleague just, uh, Rosie just put in a URL uh, for um, today's session. Um, hopefully <laughs> these things it will fill out today. Um, it shouldn't, it's only three questions, um, an evaluation uh for the session today um but thank you um so much for um coming today